Hey, hey, welcome back, my good friends. I, uh, I've i been receiving a lot of comments and questions and all of those good things. And uh, as always, it's always a pleasure to hear from everyone. Uh, I had a couple of people ask me some uh, marital questions <laughs> and uh, things like, oh, before I get married, how do I do this or how do I do that? One of the uh, most important pieces of advice that I've told people is if you have money or property or whatever going into a marriage, uh, always just keep that separate, all right? Because what I've told people, the, the way the law works is, let's say someone has uh, their own piece of property or they have, you know, whatever, they saved up like 200 grand before they got married. If they then start putting money into that account, you know, uh, during the marriage, then it's like, uh, that account gets tainted, all right? Then it becomes like not yours anymore. So I've always told people, uh, you know, especially if they're on their second marriage or they get married later in life uh, when they actually have money as opposed to getting married at 19 or 20 when they have nothing, is, uh, yeah, just keep all of that separate. Gotta keep them separated. So let's talk. So today's gonna be a fun episode. It's, uh, we're all talking about the, this really, really gutsy lawsuit by... Seattle School District. Okay, get this. The Seattle School District filed this massive lawsuit against Facebook, against Google, YouTube, which is owned by Google, uh, TikTok, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, uh, owned by Facebook, right? So the Seattle School District sued all of them. And uh, it's a major federal lawsuit. And here we go. And through this lawsuit, as always, you know, I, I try to teach the law and through the lens of an of a interesting lawsuit. So here you're going to learn uh, about social media rules and social media laws, uh, civil procedure, and of course, jurisdiction, right? Uh, like, how could we not? It's just too much fun. Okay, so let me set this up, what's going on here. So uh, the Seattle School District, again, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, uh, filed this federal lawsuit in January 2023. So they just filed it this week, okay? And uh, the the basis of this lawsuit, the nutshell version, is that the Seattle School District is claiming that these social media platforms are uh, killing the kids, basically, okay? And, uh, you know, messing with their mental health, messing with, uh, you know, the depression levels, it's increased uh, suicide levels in uh, in children, um, and that the Seattle School District has been, you know, facing these problems of how to treat these kids, uh, you know, who they're supposed to just be educating, right? But there's all these mental health issues, and a lot of it, according to the Seattle School District, is being caused by these uh, social media platforms. Uh, um, and one of the things they you know, mentioned right away is President Biden in the last State of the Union address stated, uh, you know, I mean, quote, you know, we need to hold the social media platforms accountable for the national experiment they're conducting on our children for profit. Uh, you know, those are the president's words, right? So it's, it's um, you know, quoted here in this complaint. All right. Now, um, a few of the logistics. So the Seattle School District the uh, the legal fees on this case is probably going to be a few million dollars, okay? <laughs> because they're fighting these big companies, and you're going to see really quick how it's going to escalate. And uh, they hired a law firm, Keller Robach, and uh, the legal fees for the school district itself, in a way, is going to be zero. Uh, because the way they retain this law firm in Seattle is by uh, what's called a contingency agreement. The contingency agreement means that the law firm will only get paid if they get the money from the defendants. So one of the big selling points is that the school district is not paying anything to the law firm that's fighting this. So the law firm is doing this. Um, they're not doing it for free, obviously. What they're doing is they're hoping that if they either win in a trial or they get some sort of big settlement that they could get the legal fees that way, which which is what this law firm has done and has been, you know, has made millions and millions of dollars doing that in the past, right? Okay, so what are the allegations here? The allegations are very dire, okay, in the sense that um, what, you know, as, as I said earlier, it's causing all this damage to the kids, but how is it doing that? Uh, and then the the Seattle School District, through their law firm and their experts and everything, detail this really well. Okay, so 
they've kind of uh, walked through this, how the social media platforms operate and, uh, you know, okay, so let me uh, explain some of the examples that they use. Okay, so they're alleging that the social media platforms use these uh, psychological tricks to hook children and, and get children addicted to the sites. And some of them include uh, this neuropsychology of reward system. And uh, it's kind of, uh, and, and, and they listed here, like the slot machines in Las Vegas do the same thing. And what it does is kind of like the way people interact with the social media, sometimes they'll get, you know, certain like benefits or it'll kind of like ding, 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 you got a hundred subscribers or ding, 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 you got like a 5,000 likes or whatever the heck, right? So that they've kind of built in these little rewards, like similar to a slot machine. And the rewards are not, you know, uh, if you, you know, they, it doesn't come just once. It comes like every day and it comes intermittently. Okay. And then the reason for that is kind of the psychological, uh, you know, it's like, oh, when am I going to get the next reward? Or when am I going to get the next like? Or when am I going to get the next this, this, that, right? These uh, social media platforms have retained experts in kind of um, scheduling these uh, intermittent rewards and kind of uh, encouraging people like that kind of stay on the websites and continue using it. They, they've encouraged then this reward system that will get the, get people to stay on there. Okay. The other ways that they've, uh, they've done this in terms of kind of getting people hooked it's uh, it's what's called this tailored feeds. And all of us know what the tailored feed is, is, is everybody's feed is different. Meaning when they're on their uh, phone, everybody has uh, like when they're scrolling and everything, everybody has different things that are uh, appear to them. And what they have done is they've, you know, looked at, they've kind of had these algorithms and, and whatnot. And, and everybody uses this TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, you know, YouTube, they, they look at what the user has uh, viewed and what they've liked and everything. And then they start uh, popping things up, uh, you know, pursuant to the, the user's interests. Okay. This isn't anything new, right? Nobody's like shocked by this, <laughs> right? Uh, but but the, according to this this lawsuit and the, the experts is they've kind of they've overdone that they've done it to the point where that's that is one of the the arsenal you know one one uh, weapon in their arsenal in terms of how they're going to get more people uh, in here okay uh, also they've created the the swipe system where it's almost just like a slot machine like uh, in certain like an Instagram and. And some other ones, like you could do something where you kind of swipe a certain way and it kind of like rolls until it stops on something, <laughs> you know, and they've kind of made it into a game. Now, why is this lawsuit, the Seattle School District claiming this is illegal is because it kind of uh, they've done this so that they could attract more users. And uh, what the lawsuit really harps on is that in addition to. Uh, getting more users, what they've done uh, that is especially dangerous is that uh, they also, they get more users and they get those users to stay on the social media a lot longer. Um, and then the reason why, <laughs> you know, uh, that is harmful is because it is, let's see, da, 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 it is uh, the... The negative effects of this for, for the children is that it's increasing the uh, depression with children. And they cite a lot of studies showing that kids are more depressed these days. And part of the, the a major reason is this social media uh, suicide rates have gone up. Like I said uh, previously, there's a lot of cyberbullying. Um, and also it stated that as the kids are there longer and longer on the sites, you know, things populate that, uh, you know, have contributed to eating disorders or contributed to, um, they, they list a lot of cases of, of girls like having uh, eating disorders after viewing social media for too long. They've listed things, you know, uh, different um, TikTok videos that encouraged like extreme diets, you know, AKA, uh, anorexic, right. And, uh, 
And I never knew about this. They call it the the corpse bride diet, okay? I guess there was a, a movie a long time ago, this this corpse bride. And so then they have these videos like, oh, how can you be that skinny, you know? And how can you only eat 300 calories a day, you know, things like that. So these things have have contributed to this uh, this massive depression, massive eating order, uh, eating disorders, uh, you know, suicide rates and all that. Now, now let's talk about kind of the how this lawsuit is going to proceed and 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 the mechanisms behind it and what kind of relief is available. All right. And of course, the first order of business jurisdiction. OK, like, wow, what is going on here? Because these big companies are all located outside of Seattle. They're they're uh, where they were incorporated. So what we have here is we have the plaintiff is Seattle School District. And then the defendants, once again, you know, Google, uh, Facebook, now called Meta, uh, and uh, TikTok, Snapchat, uh, Instagram, which is part of Facebook. Okay, so uh, this is proceeding in a federal court in Western Washington, okay? And then the reason why the federal court has jurisdiction, it's called diversity jurisdiction, which means that if you have a plaintiff that's in one state and then the defendants are all defendants of states other than the state where the plaintiff is in, okay, then you have a diversity of jurisdiction. And as long as that lawsuit is over $75,000, then that is the the first kind of requirement to be able to get into a federal court. Um, the second one would be is if you don't have what's called diversity jurisdiction, you would have to have some sort of like, it's called a federal question, meaning like it's a federal constitutional issue or some sort of federal law, like a bankruptcy law or Americans with Disabilities Act law or something like that. Uh, so that's how you get uh, what's called subject matter jurisdiction. And in this particular case, we have a diversity of jurisdiction. The whole reason why that's the case where you can have a, if you know you want to go to federal court where the plaintiff and the defendants are citizens of other states is because the theory is that they won't, one won't have some sort of you know, home field advantage in a state court, right? Uh, so that the theory being that the federal courts are more, uh, you know, it's like a neutral site. You know, if there's a football game between two teams, the neutral site supposedly is, is the federal court, whereas a home field advantage is one, uh, a state court. Okay, so now uh, the next order of business to have jurisdiction is what's called the uh, personal jurisdiction, meaning that these companies have done business in that state, which all of these companies, even though they're residents, they're incorporated in either California or Delaware or both, uh, they've done business in, in Washington so that they've availed themselves to the state of Washington so that they're allowed to be sued in the federal court in the state of Washington. And they have all done that. Okay, so that's how the federal court has jurisdiction, but it doesn't end there. There is a problem, da, 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 and that is that you have here a lot of different big defendants, all right? And a lot of times what we end up doing, there's this whole other arena of federal cases, and that's called multi-district litigation, all right? MDL, multi-district litigation. And the theory here is that once you start having a lot of big companies and those companies being you know, uh, residents of different states and you have a lot of different plaintiffs, it's, um, you then have to figure out, okay, well, how can we get all of this in one court? Because some of these cases, you know, if, if it's more convenient, like let's say one of the defendants, oh, everything here is located in California and then this particular issue or this particular defendant should go to California, Right. Um, so sometimes what we do what the federal law has done over the past few decades is they've uh, en enacted these laws. It started in the 60s, actually it enacted these laws that if we have a big enough federal case and if we have a lot of big you know, defendants and a lot of plaintiffs and a lot of people involved, then we'll assign it to a multi district litigation case. And that then the the federal court has a panel. OK that that convenes okay and the panel uh is like a is a the panel members are all throughout the country they intervene and they say okay where would be the best court so we assign everything to just this one case and where can we put that um you know they may keep that in seattle 
They may say that the, the best court to have all of this going is in the Bay Area in California. They may say that, you know, it could be in Washington or New York or, or whatever. Okay. So the reason why I talk about this jurisdiction for so long is because, you know, when I, when I, when I talked about this case to a few people, uh, you know, they, they kept asking, oh man, that's interesting, but how, how is this going to be resolved? And, and how is that fair? They should be allowed to make money and, and what's the right remedy? And, and uh, you know, what do they have to prove? Of course, there's going to be some scientists that say this is harmful and other scientists that say blah, blah, blah. And then I tell them, well, we will know how all of that goes down in about three years from now. Because the first three years of litigation will likely be over da, 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 the jurisdiction, okay? Uh, golly gee. So that will be, you know, um, my gut feeling is after all of it is said and done, it'll probably go to some sort of uh, the federal court in the California Bay Area. I think that's where it will ultimately go to. And the reasoning behind that is because... Google and uh, Facebook uh, are located in the Bay Area. Now, Snapchat is located in Los Angeles, you know, not too far from there. So that is my gut feeling. Now, why is that? You know, I could tell you one thing for sure. The Seattle plaintiffs will not want it to go in the Bay Area, right? Uh, because the Bay Area, you know, they're more kind of big tech friendly, you could say, <laughs> Right. Uh, so, you know, the Seattle plaintiffs will probably want that to stay there. So anyway, long story short, oh, I'm sorry. A very, very long story short is that the, uh, the case will probably end up in the Bay area, although it'll be fought very hard by the Seattle plaintiffs. Okay. Now, after that is then done, then you have to have, you know, uh, you know, gather the evidence. Now, what the heck is that going to look like? Okay, um, because all of us probably agree that freaking uh, we don't. I have three kids. All right. Three kids. And they're all on social media all the time. <laughs> right. And um, there was a few people that told me, oh, well, that's not you know, I bet you the the tech. How are they going to win? And how are they going to beat the tech companies? And I had the perfect answer to that. And I said, well. Every judge has uh, probably, you know, either kids or grandkids and they're, you know, the younger ones are probably addicted to social media, <laughs> right? So I bet you the judges will say something like, I can't get my darn grandson off of Pornhub. No, <laughs> just kidding. I can't get my grandson off of this, this, this freaking phone all the time, right? You know, so um, it's I, I, you know, it's it's kind of that theory. And then, God forbid, for these companies, if it goes to a jury, you know, I could just imagine the jury. They're all on their phone playing, <laughs> you know, during the whole trial. Uh, no, but, um, you know, it's it's pretty clear. I think they're the, the big tech companies are going to they know they're going to have this problem that the judges and, the you know, if it ever goes to a jury, that they're going to be faced with all these people that uh, the first reaction they're going to have is yes. Instagram and TikTok and everything, they do everything they can to get children like hooked on this. All right. Um, now, you know, and, and it was the same things that happened for decades against the tobacco makers and then, you know, the casinos, the casinos have somehow won all of those lawsuits, by the way, like the casinos, for some crazy reason, they could make things as addictive as possible in the, in the casino. They could, they could, uh, and, and the fact that they, uh, they can target vulnerable people. It's like, God bless them. The casinos have never lost those cases, you know, and, and casinos have been able to get away with, you know, things that are especially addicting things like, you know, give everyone free alcohol, right. While they're losing their money. <laughs> right. Uh, that has been challenged and the casinos have won. Then the casinos have, uh, have allowed to kind of like keep the lighting and everything look like it's always daytime. You know, or or it's like it's not even daytime in the casinos. It's like uh, like vague, like you don't know. So they that has been challenged as a kind of like a psychologically addictive thing. And the casinos won that. Right. Um, and then the other things that casinos have won is that they could just lend people money. Like when someone's on a losing streak or they're drunk and they don't know what the heck they're doing and they're getting desperate. The casino could say, well, how about this? 
Here's another five thousand dollars that uh, you know that you that will lend you right now. You know, um, so the casinos have been able to get away with all of that. Um, you know, okay, for better or worse. Now the social media companies are, you know, the same allegations are going on with the social media companies. I think it's going to be different with them, <laughs> all right, than the casinos. And 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 here's some of the reasoning why um, is that almost every psychologist that has been kind of challenged to look at this agrees that the, you know, the, the way it's done now and how the kids get on TikTok and Snapchat and all this other stuff, it is very addicting and that it has contributed to depression. There is a lot of uh, cyber bullying going on that, um, you know, and, and it's very rare that there'll be a psychologist that comes out and says something like, yeah, well, for our depressed kids, the best thing they could do is stay on Instagram all day, <laughs> right? Or stay or watch freaking YouTube videos all day, and that's going to get them out of depression. No, it's very unlikely they're going to say that, right? They're going to say something like freaking radical, like go exercise or or this type of uh, better eating and better, you know, therapy or something will be better, right? That's likely what they're going to say. So, um, and remember the, the one big difference about this as opposed to casinos and whatnot is that uh, the Seattle school district is, is fighting for the kids, right? So it's a, it's a like good cause, right? So I think that what's gonna happen is that these big companies after this big fight over jurisdiction and after all this uh, expert testimony will come out, right? I think it's gonna be pretty freaking clear that the um that the plaintiffs will win <laughs> okay that is my gut feeling i do not think that these big companies after the fight for jurisdiction they're going to prove to the court that they are not uh unfairly targeting teens that they're not unfairly contributing to this mental health crisis i don't think that's going to happen uh i think the opposite will happen so you know uh the the plaintiffs are going to win now comes the question what the heck does winning mean, all right? And, uh, you know, because it's not going to be a situation where the, uh, the, the court is going to uh, force these companies to close. That's not going to happen, okay? So if that's what someone wants, and the Seattle School District is smart. They've already listed that they don't want these social media companies to close. Why did they list that? Because there's no way that will happen, all right? That's not winning. That would be like destroying them, and they're not going to win that much, all right? Um, oh, by the way, I, the, some of the funnier little little comments in here, there's this one paragraph about Snapchat. I love this. I, when I read this, I was like, ah, um, this is about Snapchat. I just thought this was so funny. I had to share this very, very particular thing in the complaint. In addition to its marketing, Snapchat has targeted a younger audience by designing Snapchat in a manner that older individuals find hard to use. Uh, the effect of this design is that Snapchat is a platform where its young users are insulated from older users, including their parents, like me, okay? Um, Snapchat CEO even once said, we've made it hard for parents to embarrass their children. <laughs> right? Dang it. I just thought I didn't know what I was doing when I tried to get on Snapchat. And I thought, I said to, to somebody, I said, man, this website is stupid. You know, uh, I don't know why anyone uses it. And when I read that, I realized, oh, <laughs> Snapchat is so smart that they made it difficult for some old geezer like me to use it when my, when my kids, I remember one time my own kids you know, like uh, my son Martin got on the phone or something and he was like playing with it and he did all these things on Snapchat and he, he made all these like funny characters of himself. And I'm like, how the heck did you do that? You don't even use this. And he just like got on it and use it. And when I tried to use it, I'm like, I don't understand how to use this. Now I know why they've somehow figured out a way to do that. Okay. Uh, and so this lawsuit is saying that the, the reason why they did that is so kids could then go on Snapchat knowing that their parents are not going to be able to use it. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, wow. However they did that is freaking genius. Okay. I kind of dig that. Um, and then the other thing that they said here, I guess Snapchat was the first one, according to this lawsuit, Snapchat uh, added a feature, uh, the ability for users to create cartoon avatars modeled after themselves. And then, you know, they could redesign that cartoon avatar and then that kind of gets them more hooked and more kind of 
into this like unrealistic space and whatnot. I guess Snapchat was the first one that did that. Pretty cool. Hey, speaking of cat cartoon avatars, check this one out of me. <laughs> you love that or what? I I had to get the artist. Uh, I had to get them to tone down the muscles, right, to make that look more realistic. Okay, all right. Now let's get serious. Okay, freaking Joe Samuel, stop messing around. Let's get serious for a change. All right. So uh, what is the deal here, and how is this going to be resolved? Okay. So we get to, and I've and I've said it before, right? What is da 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 the remedy? Okay. Uh, what is going to happen? Uh, and, and like I've said before, in law school, there's a there's classes just on remedies, you know. Uh, so here, the remedy would not be to close these companies down. OK, uh, also, the remedy would not be, you know, just money. Like a, in a lot of cases, the remedy is just simply money, uh, meaning, you know, some sort of monetary award. Um, you know, that would be good if there's like a car crash case where there's a, a, a real. OK, here this was. Uh, this guy, you know, whatever, rear-ended this other guy and and then the plaintiff, you know, broke his knee. And then he had like $800,000 of medical bills and for the rest of his life, he's going to have knee pain and he's going to maybe, you know, um, you know, he can't play sports like he used to or go hiking like he used to, blah, blah, blah. So the only remedy in that case would be a monetary award, you know, so the, the defendant has to pay him or the insurance company for the defendant has to pay the guy, you know, whatever, a million dollars or whatever it is, right? Um, because it's not like the remedy there would be like, well, let's break that guy's knee. Like, we don't want to do that. Right. Um, you know, so that's the remedy in most cases, the remedy is a monetary award. The reason why it won't work here is because this is what's called, you know, in law, it's called an ongoing nuisance. All right. Meaning that it'll keep going on. Right. It would be like, uh, that I've had some cases where they, they call me and be like, yeah, my neighbor just is loud or they're smelly, smelly being, you know, if the neighbor, they open up like a chicken farm or something, right? There's been cases like that. It's like, so everything smells like crap everywhere, right? So those are what's called ongoing nuisances or if they're, you know, whatever, they're, they're, they're doing construction and there's too many cars coming and going or there's too many, you know, whatever, concrete trucks going, it's messing up the streets. Those are called ongoing nuisances. So here we have to have something that's kind of a more uh, long-term benefit, right? Okay, so here's what the Seattle School District wants to do, okay? Uh, it's called the prayer for relief. I love those terms. So this is the remedy that the, the school district wants, okay? They want uh, an, an order that says that this is a public nuisance, okay? That, that way they can have an ongoing um, uh, monitoring, okay? So then they want to have, okay, uh, requiring defendants to abate the public nuisance described, uh, you know. Now, how do they abate the public nuisance described? And and what that is, is uh, they want to have some sort of fund established that will kind of, uh, you know, have um, like education for parents, right? Or they could have like some sort of treatment for uh, excessive kind of uh, like problems with some kids. OK, they want to have something like a uh, like a monitoring uh, system set up, you know, where if something is is done too unfairly. There's some sort of counsel for it. OK, you know, and, and that could be, you know, the, the companies have done this themselves that they've said, OK, now we started when, you know, we have this uh, whatever. We have some uh, jobs that or some people here that all they do is they watch TikTok videos all day. And then they, you know, when something is flagged by someone else, they look at it, they review it to see if they should take that down or not, you know, things like that. Um, and so, you know, the companies have done that. But what this lawsuit wants is some sort of, you know, I don't I don't know what it would be called, like a council or some sort of, uh, you know, committee that that overlooks this. OK, uh, which is funny. Every time I say that, I think of the the McCarthy, you know, in the in the 50s and, and 60s. Right. Uh, we don't want that. We don't want some sort of community to be like, that looks too communist. Like, that's a communist platform. We get that platform out. It's got to be some sort of committee that says, oh, this is harmful content. You know, so if something is showing, uh, you know, kids that, oh, this is what you could do and, and this is how you can hurt yourself or whatever. We want those things taken off. Or if some video is out there that's making fun of, uh, you know, people that eat, you know, eating issue, eating. I don't know, like they were making fun of someone who's too fat or or encouraging some sort of like eating disorder, you know? Um, 
it, it, it is not, this is why it's not an easy fix, right? Because, um, and then the funny part is that it's going to always be changing. Like every month, every day, there's going to be new issues, right? So uh, the reason why this lawsuit is so kind of complicated is because of the remedies that they're seeking. It's very uh, difficult, all right? The, well, the only easy remedy here is that they want the law firm to get paid <laughs> that brought all of this, okay? That might, if they bring this lawsuit and they win or they do, you know, they show how these companies are doing something wrong, then yeah, I think it would be fair to pay them the legal fees because um, the reasoning for that is that so that you encourage law firms, if there is a meritorious claim, to file it and and seek justice. You know, that's why the law firm will will for sure get paid at the end. I, that is probably the only thing I could guarantee is that this law firm that brought the lawsuit will definitely get paid because it is a good lawsuit. They brought it very well, very responsibly. Okay, here's the other things that they want uh, the in, in the remedy and then they want funding to be uh, provided to different school districts. Okay, is uh, hiring additional personnel to address mental, emotional, and social health issues meaning like at the high school and at this, at that, they'll have like, you know, more counselors that could kind of look for problems with the kids. Developing additional resources to address mental, emotional, social media issues, okay? Uh, resources like, you know, whether it's commercials or books or, you know, some sort of, uh, maybe they'll make TikTok videos addressing that, <laughs> right? Uh, all jokes aside, they actually have to do that. Uh, like, for example, if you go to some of these sites and you click something like, I want to lose weight, or I need to lose weight or whatever. Some of the first things that pop up in the feed is kind of these more uh, responsible kind of, you know, hey, like these are the healthy ways to do it. And this is that, you know, as opposed to someone being like, you're too fat, you need to stop eating, <laughs> right? Okay, so anyway, all right. Increasing training for teachers and staff to identify students exhibiting symptoms affecting their mental, emotional health. Uh, so that would mean, you know, some sort of, uh, like, like it says there, so... It, they would have funding so that their teachers could uh, could do these programs so they could detect it uh, with kids having the problems, okay? Uh, training teachers, staff, and members of the community about the harms caused by defendants' wrongful conduct. Uh, developing lessons plan to teach students about the dangers of using uh, defendants platform, man, when I was a kid, okay, that was a long time ago, by the way, it was, it was the, you know, like the say no to drugs or whatever. Uh, and we, there would be assemblies like that, that we would go to, I guess now it would be, you know, say no to Instagram, <laughs> right? Or if you notice yourself at 3 a.m. checking Instagram and crying all night, then that is a danger. You know, there would be like uh, increasing disciplinary services and time spent addressing bullying, harassment, and threats. Uh, one of the things that they have, the schools have considered is what to do with people that do the bullying because you don't want to just kick them out of school because that doesn't help that person and that they'll go to another school potentially and do it there. So they've had problems with kind of like, well, what do we do with bullying and how do we address it and how do we, you know, uh, so this lawsuit is, is aiming to have funding for those type of resources and those type of training for teachers to know what to do with that. Uh, confiscating devices. Uh, all right. There is actually millions of these updating student handbook, uh, updating school policies, uh, you know, okay. So yeah, this is what I mean by this law firm did a good job with this lawsuit. Okay. And, uh, the remedies they are seeking is, uh, it seems reasonable and fair. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, my prediction about all of this goes like, you know, goes like this. Uh, the, after the jurisdiction fight for a couple of years, it'll end up in the Bay area somewhere. And then after that, there'll be a big settlement. And the only reason there's a settlement is because these, these companies know that they will lose, uh, in the long run, um, be, you know, for the reasons I I've stated before. And in that settlement, the law firm will get a lot of money. And then the different school districts will get a lot of money to address those issues that we stated. And that the media companies, the, the Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and all that, they will keep having their structures and they'll try to uh, boast them in, in the sense of looking for dangerous patterns, dangerous videos, uh, you know, put things in there that'll be like more uh, attuned to kind of helping kids out, things like that. 
Uh, and that is how the lawsuit will be done. And uh, my best prediction, my favorite prediction, is all of this will happen after a lot of lawyers make a lot of money. <laughs> all right, all right, good stuff. Keep them coming with the comments and questions. I love hearing from you folks. Pew.